So, in and eyes of brown, female reproductive tract disease is the most common disease we see, especially in an older bird. This bird's really unusual because it's, you know, probably four to six years old, which is unusual. It's not laying well, but it's coming with a belly full of fluid. And how do we know? Um, we know because you can actually, you can actually blot it. If you, if you look at the back here, it's very, very swollen. You'll normally get poo catching on the feathers. But you can actually put your hand here and feel it. It's like a, it's, you can actually feel if you put your hand there, it's like holding a balloon. So it's very swollen. Now birds don't have a diaphragm, so that fluid um, could potentially, if, if we turn the bird on its back or on its side, it can go straight to the heart and kill the bird. So when our nurse holds the bird, we're going to hold the bird up so we don't get fluid going into the chest, into the body cavity. We're going to try and drain fluid by putting a simple catheter in a sterile area. And we'll see what comes out. The bird weighs about two and a half kilos. So let's see how much we can take out. Um, obviously, there can be two main causes for this. Female reproductive tract disease or the ectopic ovulation and maybe egg builds up in the uterus is the more common. But cancer is the other one. I think would you prefer a slightly bigger towel? No, it'll be fine. Okay. It'll be fine. As you know, we're in the peak of COVID now with 500,000 active cases in Australia, which is one in 80, so we're still wearing masks. Um, miraculously, none of us in the clinic have had COVID yet, which is a bit of a miracle. If you just, just get the wings. taking a catheter and we as we and as I'm holding I'm putting no. no pressure on the abdomen I'm actually supporting the chook from her legs now when I was at school I used to, when I was young was little cowboy movies and they always had two guns shooting at the same time so because it takes a long time to drain I'm actually gonna put a second catheter in as well Interesting fact about these catheters, these are horse catheters. <laughs> they are very, very large. If you've donated blood before, that's the size of them. Is there anyone taking one phone call? I need to talk to So, you're watching it drain. As you take a look at the fluid, so you can see that it's a lot of fluid coming out. It looks a little bit like a chicken's wing, but um, it's, a, it's just a very funny picture, you know, to show a chicken pouring urine out both sides, you can't even see the tips of the catheter. So when we've drained this, what we're going to do as part of the treatment, we give something called Deslorelin, for the doctors watching a GnRH agonist, which goes into pituitary, and it stops the um, production of FSH and LH, for follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which then stops the ovaries from producing estrogen and progesterone. So we're inducing menopause. The bird will go in four days' time, which is how long it takes to work. The bird will go straight into menopause. The hardest part about, about doing this procedure is actually holding. Our head nurse, Ethan, is holding it really well. He's actually sitting. He's got his elbows up. And it's getting as comfortable as possible. Believe it or not, some people are crazy enough to do this standing up. <laughs> That's too much effort. So I'm going to... It's not urine though, is it? No. So what I'll be doing... No, this is not urine. So what I'll be doing after this, he'll get an antibiotic, although this is probably sterile fluid. We've got an anti-inflammatory because there's going to be a lot of inflammation in this cavity. You can imagine with all this fluid. We'll also give a crop feed because we've lost a lot of fluid. I'll give some fluids to replace something that's been taken out. And a hormone implant, a calcium injection. And we have an incredible number of birds that do well, more than 50% do very well. This owner's got a flock of 11 birds, so we're not going to be doing x-rays and bloods like we would do in a dog or a cat, which is ideal. But all we're going to do is complete uh, the drainage as much as we can. Shireen, if you could just try and get as much as you can. Then I'm going to take that call, mm -hmm. and I'll show the, the, I'll show the implant and the crop feed after that. Can you help, Phil? Help strange. Hmm? I'm not sure I just said it. I just like to say. Too small. Bigger. You want bigger? Yeah. Yeah. Bigger. Alright. Here's that one. I don't know. You're supposed to make the bird pee on Ethan. Well, I'm the one with full control over where it goes. No, it's wrong. <laughs> 
see facial expressions, ma'am. <laughs> Looks like we're getting it all out. How are we feeling? Pretty much better. Oh, that's, yeah. I don't think there's more. I'm just going to... I wonder if you whisk it hard enough. Oh, God, no. Oh, come on, show you. <laughs> you reckon? We're I'll not going to ask that question. I'll be in. You reckon? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing, Shireni? <laughs> we're, about to, we're about to whisk the whole of the game out. I don't think so. No, we're about to give it an implant. So this is the Des Laurel oh, no. implant. <clears throat> I've got a little bit more cranial than that. A cranial cordal. Yeah. I just Ethan's it messing up his words. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Not enough chocolate, clearly. No, and a long week. Really long week. Probably. So some nice behind the scenes stuff. Ethan's been pooped on. <laughs> when? <laughs>